John Hoffman, you co-created the comedy series Only Murders in the Building, uh, and now you're nominated for three Writers Guild Awards. Uh, first off, how did you come together with Steve Martin to create this kind of uh, comic whodunit? Uh, it was the most good fortune moment of my life. Um, Dan Fogelman, uh, I spoke with Dan Fogelman and his producing partner, Jess Rosenthal, uh, with their company, and they came to me and they said, we need someone to meet with uh, Steve Martin, he has an idea, and we need someone to consider co-creating and show running a show uh, for him and Marty Short at that time, it was just the two of them that we knew were gonna be involved. And I thought, well, you don't say no to that. Uh, I was very intimidated, but um, I immediately, started spinning on a bunch of ideas for it uh the idea that steve had and then we met for dinner and i was uh immediately uh confronted with someone who was completely gracious open and generous and um i thought oh this could really work and it's been nothing but that since steve has been amazing uh and the whole group around us has been incredible to sort of uh all see the same thing pretty quickly uh, and what's that collaboration like for that, like, you know, for that first episode? Is it, you know, are you working really hand in hand the whole time or do you take a pass and does he take a pass or what was that like? It was um, very much a meet, meeting with Steve, um, uh, both in L.A. and then he invited me to New York and, and spend time to work and craft out and I would pitch and sort of lay out a first pilot uh, story. And we started to go back and forth then and say, okay, here, here, through, you know, what about this? What about this? And I loved the process so much because um, it felt like we were, I knew that the hope was that we would do something unexpected or not as expected maybe um, when you hear the pitch on this one and you think of who's in it. And, uh, but when you think of who's in it really with Steve and Marty, I thought, you know, the elevated, comedic material is what I was aiming for and and you know they're incredible dramatic actors as well as comedic actors and so um I thought there was a landscape there that was potentially fresh um within this uh true crime comedy mystery format and uh it wasn't uh long before Steve was immediately engaged in the various leaps we take uh with the show and that wasn't surprising because he's been doing that all his career. But um, and so that was really lovely and welcoming and became a very fertile comedic uh, and but also dramatic uh, landscape to work in with him. And we went back and forth. I would do a draft. I would send the draft. He would send notes back. We would have conversations back and forth. He would do things. He would make adjustments, things like that. It was a brilliant partnership. I, I could not have loved anything more. And still to this day, every I get one sentence emails from Steve Martin. He writes them in one sentence and it's just notions and ideas and reflections on a line or something like that. But I get six or seven of them a day. So um, it's fantastic. Uh, and another uh, interesting thing about this story, of course, is that it's a mystery. Uh, and I'm always interested in the writing of mysteries because it feels so much like architecture in a way where you're where you're putting pieces together and they have to fit or the whole thing collapses uh like what how how was it a challenge to kind of know the structure of this mystery and how it would unfold uh from episode to episode scene to scene uh what, what was that uh, thought process you know i've been listening to the other writers you've been talking to and they're all brilliant and, and i i they've all said the same thing you know yeah it was hard um and and i i appreciate that so much it's my love for writers where i'm like immediately like it's hard it's really hard all of it a mystery has particular things that are difficult a mystery comedy is another thing that makes it a little bit challenging and then you know trying to find the balance is the real challenge and i have a you know uh, within the partnership with dan fogelman on this and steve and then this brilliant room of writers that i work with every day was quick uh, to realize that, um, you know, the whole mystery arc over 10 episodes would have to go start in our minds from backward to forward. So we had to do where we were aiming and figure everything else out, twist our way to the end and then work backwards. And then we could start writing the second episode. Now I had the first episode laid out and a pretty good structural track for the three, three acts of the season. But, um, 
boy, did I need a lot of help with with sort of sorting out um, the details and keeping track. And that's a fun thing, but I sort of demystified it a little bit because I realized a lot of the scripts I'd worked on before this, they were all kind of mysteries. Whenever you work on a story, you're always burying things and revealing things. And whether it's an actual mystery you're doing or not, um, I, I kind of was able to sort of write it without being too intimidated by the form uh, to, uh, you know, sort of allow myself the freedom to say, I can do this, I can do this mystery, even though I've never done a mystery before in my life. Uh, and as you mentioned, doing a, a mystery comedy uh, has its own uh, challenges. Uh, what, what, was, what were the thoughts going into balancing, uh, you know, a murder story with uh, that sort of human uh, or, you know, humorous and, and also human element uh, where you're uh, learning about these characters? You know, it's all about, for me, it's about the human connection, right? So the human connection in the way into the story for me is humor. It always is typically, and, and when I write, I, I can't help myself but try to come in from that direction because it just feels like the most connective tissue to people. You open people up, you watch people open up, you let them sort of chop each other down with a good line or two. Um, and here we have, uh, with Selena as well, who was the big surprise in the trio for me, of how well they all mix together in that generational gap and the way in which the humor can live and breathe in some, I think, hope, fresh way uh, that we maybe didn't expect or see coming. I um, think also though, just the nature of having um, Steve and Marty who, you know, it's so the vein of humor and, and brilliant comedy is in their veins. And, and if you can sort of ride that wave, you know, you've got that part of it. Um, and if, you know, I, I have this lexicon and, and understanding as we all do of Steve and Marty's career um, in my ears. So it's, it's not hard to sort of imagine be them as these characters and sort of threading through. And once we've got a good plot and a good structure, um, what they might say that disarms a typical mystery structure throughout all three of them, uh, that felt really fun um, to play around with once we had the big structure. Um, and, you know, the mysteries in particular have such an a, a important relationship with the audience because, you know, you're trying to lead them to a place that, you know, the audience is going to feel like makes sense, but isn't maybe necessarily the most predictable. Uh, like, did you have people like as the season, the episodes were airing, like people who came to you, like they figured it out, they, 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 they knew where it was going. Uh, uh, and and how, how do you feel when someone figures it out before the season gets there? It was so fascinating, that process, to have people responding. You know, you go on Twitter, but also you get a message or, you know, from your brother-in-law who's like, it's Teddy, don't tell me. Um, and, and I'm like, okay, I, 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 you know, whatever episode they're on and they're guessing and all of that. So that was really fun. I was amazed, you know, there's bigger communities who really got into the show and uh, started theorizing about it. And I thought, well, that's really clever what they're talking about. We didn't do that, but we've got something else. So it was gonna be an interesting like tightrope walk to sort of see how everyone was going to react. And um, one of the big things, there's one really big clue that comes up in episode nine, at the very end of episode nine, that is planted in episode two. And that one was one I was sort of stressed out about the whole time. Like, oh my God, if someone knows what this is and if we show it in episode two, does that give the whole thing away before we reach where we want to reach? And that was the thing I was mainly tracking. And I think it was a Reddit board or something like that that came up, you know, with what it was about five days before uh, it aired that episode nine. So I thought, wow, if we got this far before that dropping a little bit, just in that little big world of Reddit boards, but um, it was uh, gratifying to know that it didn't, it didn't leak or break or no one picked up on it until then. And I was really happy with the feeling of, of uh, you know, and in the mystery, you're always going to have sort of different feelings about whether, you know, that was satisfying or not. But I think on, on the whole, I was delighted by um, the response to the mystery story in our, in our piece. I think that's the other thing, hopefully, that might have surprised people. Um, and, you know, you've been renewed for a second season um, and you, have you know, basically teased. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, been Marty Short's trailer. He's going to walk in here any minute with a sandwich for lunch. Just by the way, <laughs> uh, but you like tease the 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 second season mystery all the way from the first scene in season one. Um, right. You know, 
do you have a lot of ideas like sort of backed up like you know for like seasons three four five and six do you have like this whole like basket of ideas that you uh, already have sort of formulating yes i think of um there's a uh, great broadway actress elaine stritch used to say she can't remember lines uh from a bad play um and i can't have a lot of ideas or write well from a bad idea. So this idea felt very much like, oh my, I can't stop thinking of ideas on this one. And it's also the blessing of like incredible people that are doing this show um, all around, backstage, front stage, everywhere. Um, but in this case, the um, embrace also of the approach we took with the material and expanding it in sort of like, you know, imaginative ways, hopefully. Um, that just all feels like the most delightful experience to sort of go, oh, what about, what about, what about, what about, and then you unspool that. Uh, it's easy to get to many seasons if we are so lucky. Uh, well, con yeah, congratulations on this season of the show and the next season you're currently working on um, and potentially several seasons after that. Uh, it's been, a, and of course, congratulations on the Writers Guild nominee. Oh, I'm so thrilled by those. Thank you so much, Daniel. It's really nice to talk to you.